For literally months now, people have been asking me to look into legends of America's giant black triangle aircraft, known to many as the TR-3B. Now, I promise I haven't been ignoring you guys, but I have been avoiding this topic because, oddly enough, I have a personal stake in this one. Now, I don't know if the TR-3B is real, but if it is, I saw one a bit less than 30 years ago. But with UAP whistleblowers coming out of the woodwork, it's time for us to see if we can get to the bottom of this long-standing mystery. Is the TR-3 real? And if it isn't, what did I see? I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Giant black triangular aircraft, often flying at low altitude and making next to no noise, have been reported over the United States and other nations since the 1950s. But according to a number of UFO reporting databases, there was a significant uptick in reports of these sorts of triangular craft starting in the mid-1990s. And to be honest with you guys, for me, that adds up. You see, long before I was an award-winning defense journalist, before I was a U.S. Marine or even a teenager, I saw something strange in the skies over Torrington, Connecticut. Now, whatever I saw, I can honestly credit with me being in this line of work today, but you guys know me pretty well by now, and I always try to be honest with you. The truth is, when I started looking into this topic, I started with an ulterior motive. You see, whatever I saw as a scared 10-year-old boy looking up at the night sky scared the crap out of me at a fundamental level, so much so that it changed the course of my life, and I've spent the years since convincing myself that all I saw was a B-2 spirit. And as a result, when I became a defense journalist, anytime someone recommended that I look into sightings of giant black triangles in the sky, I rolled my eyes and dismissed it as crazy, because... I'd been telling myself that it was crazy all my life. So with all these recent UAP whistleblowers coming forward and incredible claims reaching the headlines every day, I decided now was the time to look into legends of this TR-3B, intent on finding the smoking gun that would let me dismiss this legend once and for all. Not just in public discourse, but in my own head. Now, as any journalist or researcher can tell you, it is bad form to go into a topic with pre-existing conclusions, especially ones that you're emotionally invested in. But I was so comfortable being dismissive of this topic that I guess I thought it wouldn't matter. But from my vantage point now, on the other side of days of research, I'm less sure about this subject than ever. Now, that's not to say that I now believe the United States is secretly operating a fleet of advanced aircraft powered by recovered and reverse-engineered alien technology. But much like our exploration of the legends of an Aurora hypersonic aircraft, there do seem to be some kernels of truth intertwined with decades worth of conspiratorial hyperbolic takes, prejudicial narratives being injected, and a fair bit of good old-fashioned storytelling to boot. Now, if you're interested to know about my personal experience and what I saw in the skies over Torrington, Connecticut when I was 9 or 10 years old, I'll tell you all about it at the end of this episode. But before I get there, I want to provide you with some context about this legend of the TR-3B to help you better appreciate how I got so uncomfortable researching this topic. Because despite how dismissive of this whole topic I was when I got started, it wasn't long before I ran across literally hundreds of eyewitness accounts that exactly mirrored the details of my own experience. Details that I had spent the better part of three decades convincing myself I was just misremembering. But to be clear with you guys right up front, throughout my research, I've been able to disprove far more elements of the TR-3B legend than I've been able to confirm. But it's those few remaining details that I just can't write off that were so unsettling to me in my carefully curated perspective of my own experiences, and that likely will be of the most interest to you. 
But if you're not familiar with this TR3B, giant black triangle legend, let's start by talking about what people say it is. The first thing that you need to know is that TR3B is just one of a number of names that are often used interchangeably when describing these giant black triangles. Some people call them the TR3, others call them the TR3B Black Manta or the TR3B Astra. And despite some people claiming that there are important distinctions between each, more often than not, you'll find storytellers just picking one and using it. But regardless of your designation of choice, the legends almost always include giant black triangular aircraft being operated by the United States in extreme secrecy. And while flying black triangles are certainly nothing new for Uncle Sam, these TR-3B legends are about way more than cutting-edge stealth technology or radar-absorbent coatings. According to legend, the TR-3B is a giant black aircraft that was built using reverse-engineered alien technology, and that's powered by an anti-gravitational propulsion drive. And according to those same legends, that anti-gravity drive allows these black triangles to perform insane maneuvers and may even allow them to fly in space. Now, I may understand better than most how crazy that sounds. After all, last year alone, the U.S. Air Force invested nearly $5 billion into the continued development of next-generation adaptive cycle turbofan engines for the next generation of stealth fighters. Now, if the Air Force already had a bunch of anti-gravity drives laying around at Area 51, dropping billions of dollars on far less capable jet engines seems like an awfully expensive way to avoid rousing suspicion. But, and as we all know by now, there is always a but, the TR-3B's claimed capabilities may not be quite as far outside the realm of possibility as it may seem. And in fact, some of these claimed capabilities have even been reflected in patents filed by the U.S. Navy. But stories about giant, silent, black, triangular craft flying over populated areas in the U.S. and other countries stretch back a lot further than those patents. And they're often discussed as unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, or as us old-timers used to put it, UFOs. Now, one of the first organizations to really seriously delve into reports of specifically triangular UFOs was the privately funded National Institute for Discovery Science, sometimes known as NIDS or NIDSci. Now, NIDS got its private funding from hotel mogul and multimillionaire Robert Bigelow, which is a name many of you may recognize because he's often involved in both official and unofficial investigations into UAP and other strange things that go bump in the night. Now, Bigelow's credibility isn't necessarily above reproach. Over the years, skeptics have accused him of leveraging popular interest in UFOs to secure lucrative government contracts, and some believers have even accused him of being a government disinformation agent, and everywhere in between. But it's worth noting that the National Institute for Discovery Science was seen as a fairly respectable investigatory body during its existence between 1995 and 2004. Their case reports and meta-analysis studies were often covered and discussed by credible news outlets, and because few other organizations explored these topics with anything close to the same depth, NIDS reports serve as some of the most viable resources we have for exploring this topic. In August of 2004, NIDS released its findings on Black Triangle sightings in a report that's no longer hosted online, but that can be accessed via the Internet Archive. Now, their investigation into Black Triangles started on January 5th of 2000, when they received a call on their hotline from a police officer reporting a very large, silent, brightly lit object in western Illinois. The investigation that ensued reportedly found five more police officers from different precincts and and a dozen other witnesses who all corroborated this claim. Now, according to those witness testimonies, this unusual object was flying in the direction of Scott Air Force Base in St. Clair County, Illinois. Now, that immediately raised red flags for me because Scott is the home of the U.S. Air Force's Air Mobility Command. 
Now that raised red flags because of a story I covered back in 2017 about the Air Mobility Command's Joint Forcible Entry Exercises, which include large formations of massive cargo aircraft, C-130s or C-17s, flying in loose formations across the United States. Every time they hold these exercises, there's a whole rash of UFO sightings and reports that ensue. Now, to their credit, I found a portion of the NIDS report where they discussed what they called a, quote, tentative correlation between locations of Air Mobility Command installations and reported sightings of these black triangles. And this is something the NIDS investigators tried to mitigate in their investigation by asking Air Force officials about these exercises so they could dismiss reports that could likely be explained away. In the case of that initial 2000 report, for instance, Air Force officials were clear that there were no such exercises, nor were there any other aircraft operating in the area that could explain the sighting away. Now, despite the site now being down, you can find a complete summary of witness testimonials and other sorts of statements on the Internet Archive, and I'll have a link to that in the description below. Now, NIDS opened their reporting hotline in 1999, and according to them, they received hundreds of Black Triangle reports in that first year, each one describing similar, large, silent, and often slow-moving aircraft. Now, obviously, many of the reports called into NIDS were not for Black Triangles, so for the sake of this report, they wanted to assess the real frequency of Black Triangle reports over the United States, so they reached out to other reporting databases at the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, and a man named Larry Hatch, who maintained one of the largest and most comprehensive databases of UFO sightings at the time. These organizations were particularly valuable to the NIDS investigators because NIDS didn't open their hotline to more easily collect reports until 99, which really limited their sample size in the years prior. The NIDS team then took the more than 700 combined Black Triangle sightings that had been reported to the three databases and laid them over a single U.S. highway map with U.S. Air Force installations also highlighted using blue, yellow, and green circles. According to the NIDS report, all three databases saw a significant increase in Black Triangle sightings starting in 1997 specifically. Further, the vast majority of these sightings came from well-populated areas, which would be a very unusual flight plan for a highly secretive government aircraft. Indeed, NIDS points out how the dispersion of these sightings is not in any way similar to sightings of the F-117 Nighthawk or the B-2 Spirit during their own testing regimes. There were reports of these aircraft before the public knew to be looking for them, but they were mostly relegated to Nevada and Southern California. California and primarily seen over sparsely populated areas, as you might expect. If you want to keep an aircraft secret, you don't test it over Kansas City. You test it over Area 51. Now, NID's initial hypothesis was that these black triangles were covert military aircraft in keeping with the legends of the TR-3B. But the sheer volume of reported sightings over cities and near heavily trafficked interstates prompted NIDS to reconsider that idea, openly wondering if these objects may instead come from elsewhere. Now, before we move on from this NIDS report, I want to point out that while I don't necessarily agree with their conclusions, the investigation itself seems to be well executed. And it was honestly while reading through their witness accounts and testimonials that I first started to wonder if there might actually be something to this story. Now, that's not because anything in these testimonials really sounded like a government program to me. But instead, it's because of how disconcertingly close their reports were to my own experience. They weren't talking about a blurry aircraft zooming by in the sky. They were talking about a huge black triangle flying at what seemed like an inappropriately low altitude and making next to no noise, blocking out starlight and making the hair on the back of their neck stand up. A lot of the reports even used the same words I used when describing what I saw to my wife. But here's the thing I want to make sure you remember. Even if you've come to trust me over all the time we've spent together on YouTube and TikTok and in my writing, my experience still is an evidence. The last thing I'd expect of you is to just now believe in these large black triangular craft because I say I saw one as a kid. That isn't proof, but for me, it is impetus enough for me to dig deeper. 
So let's discuss the possibility that these black triangles could be classified military aircraft. The United States has placed a heavy emphasis on aviation technology since its very inception, and today America's warfare doctrine leans heavily on the nation's ability to take and keep control of airspace over any battlefield the world over. Of course, maintaining that capability in the face of increasingly capable international competitors has always required both significant investment and equally significant secrecy. You can find a laundry list of secret aircraft programs that, once disclosed, still look awfully alien to us. Not only were highly classified stealth aircraft like the F-117 flying for years before the government acknowledged it, but even more exotic secret aircraft are now known to have been prowling the skies over the southwestern United States for years. Boeing's YF-118G Bird of Prey is one excellent example. It started its design process in 1992 within the secretive confines of the U.S. military's Groom Lake facility, known to most of us as Area 51, and it conducted a total of 40 highly classified test flights over Nevada between 1996 and 1999. This insane-looking aircraft was only disclosed to the public by Boeing in 2002 because the company itself funded the entire $67 million program without a penny of taxpayer funding. It's been widely reported that other, more classified, government-funded technology demonstrators will never see similar disclosure, with some even reportedly being buried in the sands of Area 51 to be lost to time. The bird of prey was actively flying while plane spotters and UFO junkies were collecting reports of other alleged secret aircraft like the TR-3B or Aurora. Now, as we've discussed before, that name Aurora was more than likely actually tied to the B-2 spirit, but there's still a fair amount of evidence to suggest that something like reports of Aurora may have really been in testing, housed in the same secret of hangars as the bird of prey and other other secret platforms that we'll probably never know about. Now, defense spending did see consistent reductions following the fall of the Soviet Union, but it's worth noting that the U.S. was still dumping a larger percentage of its GDP into defense than it does today until the late 1990s. In fact, when adjusted for inflation, America's 1992 defense budget of just $325 billion equates to more than $718 billion today, meaning that if Uncle Sam has the budget to fund the secret development of programs today, it almost certainly did then as well. Further, in 1991, it was reported that the U.S. Air Force had devoted more than $60.3 billion to classified research, development, and procurement over the preceding five years, 1986 through 91. Now, that's the equivalent of $137 billion today, enough to buy 1,500 F-35As or to fund Russia's entire military for two years. And trust me when I tell you that this story only gets crazier from here. Because in 1991, America's Black Triangle was seemingly revealed to the world in a series of articles published by Aviation Week and Popular Mechanics. And according to their reporting, this highly classified Black Triangle aircraft started development in 1976, made its first test flight in 1981, and according to these reputable news outlets, may have even flown alongside the F-117 in Operation Desert Storm. And two years later, in 1993, a very reputable plane spotter was tracking air combat exercises with F-15s and B-1B Lancers when he heard the sound of a very unusual form of propulsion. So he pulled up his video camera and recorded seven grainy seconds of just such a black triangle. Now, next week, I'm going to go through that Aviation Week reporting, the popular mechanics articles, the videos, and even other images of this alleged aircraft. In fact, this weekend, I've got a phone call scheduled with that plane spotter himself. We'll talk about the stories of this TR-3 in combat in Iraq, and some of the very real patents filed by the U.S. Navy that coincide with some of the crazier claims. But 
I'm also going to tell you why some of those crazier claims probably aren't true. But before we call it a day, let's quickly talk about what I saw back in 1995 or maybe 94. Back then, I lived on County Road in Torrington, Connecticut. I know it was a summer evening and that my older brother was having a friend sleep over that night. In an unusual bit of generosity, my brother and his friend were letting me hang out and we watched TV and ate pizza my parents ordered. In a real way, it was about as good a night as 10-year-old Alex ever had. Later in the evening, my brother asked me to run out to my dad's old Lincoln Town car to get the pack of playing cards out of the glove box that we kept there for road trips. I was so psyched just to be involved that I didn't think twice about it. I took off out the side door, ran down two flights of concrete steps and into our driveway. But as I opened the passenger side door on my dad's big green land yacht, the hair on the back of my neck stood up like someone was standing right behind me. I span around to see who was there, but there was nobody. It was just empty space between me and the street and my neighbor's house across the street. But then, suddenly, a huge and completely silent black triangle made its way over the tree line behind the house across the street. Now, it was dark colored, but it was a lighter shade of gray than the night sky, and it was blocking starlight as it passed to give me a sense of just how big it was. It was flying lower than any aircraft I had ever seen, seemingly just above the treetops. And although I couldn't hear anything, I could feel it in my chest. Like when you hear a car stereo subwoofer driving down the street. As the triangle passed over me, I stood there just frozen for a second before panic set in and I ran, screaming back into the house. My brother and his friend met me at the door and before long, my parents were joining them and reassuring me that all I saw was a low-flying airplane. Now, the B-2 Spirit was flying by then, but it wasn't in service and had no reason to be flying low over northwestern Connecticut. But in the years since, that's what I've told myself I saw. But back then, I was not as convinced. And when I was selected for the talented and gifted independent study program at my junior high, I chose to study unusual objects in the sky because of this incident. And in that research, I came across the phone number for a former nuclear physicist turned UFO researcher named Stanton Friedman. So in my maybe youthful ignorance, I just picked up the phone and called him. Mr. Friedman seemed pretty gruff right off the bat, but I explained that I was interested in researching UFOs and that I had a lot of questions. And in that moment, my mind froze and I couldn't come up with a single one. He seemed pretty annoyed by the whole thing, but asked me for my address before hanging up. I put the phone back on the ringer, ashamed of my poor performance, and got back to my books. About a week later, I got a big brown envelope in the mail with a return address that just said, S. Friedman. Inside, I found dozens of copied, declassified government documents, UFO witness testimonies, and even some copies of his own investigation notes. It was a research treasure trove and an incredible gift for an aspiring researcher. It was in that moment that I realized my passion for this sort of work. I can draw a clear line in my mind from that one summer evening when I saw something I can't explain to the kindness of a man I never actually met to the work that I do today. Regardless of the conclusions I can ultimately draw about these legends of a TR-3B and black triangle UFOs, I can honestly say that for that, I'm grateful. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.